If I were to do a video on my favorite books of the year and I mentioned my new book, Record Label Marketing Strategies, that just came out a couple of months ago, that would be super cringe. And I, I wouldn't do that because it's just not appropriate. I'm trying to recommend like good, legit books here, not self-promotion. You know what I mean? I would, I would never, I would never do that. I would never do that. No, that's not me. By the way, this is my third year doing my favorite books of the year, and I have always kept my book recommendations at otherrecordlabels.com slash books. So all of the books that I recommend today will be found there, links to order them yourself, as well as any of the music industry books that I've recommended in the past. One of the things we'll find today, and I've got four books, only four. I mean, I've read, I read a bunch this year, but I really wanted to highlight four. I didn't want to give you too many options. Two of them are, are distinctly music industry books. They're, they're technically memoirs, actually. And then two of them are marketing books, essentially, or um, personal development book, which I think is just as important, if not more important than reading a music book. Okay. So the first one um, is a book called, and I'm actually not even finished this book, but it's so great that uh, I wanted to share it with you. It's It just came out now. It's from Ryan Holiday, and it's called Discipline is Destiny. So this is not a music industry book, but hear me out for a second. I believe the whole ethos of this channel is to help highlight strategies and disciplines and ways of operating as a business person, as a, as a record label owner, as an individual that I think is more important than actually the nitty gritty of running a label. Of course, we talk about that in depth, but in every episode, I try to highlight some more of the human characteristics and some of the business strategies behind some of those things. And having Good personal discipline is huge for you because there are so many times you're going to want to give up. There's so many times you're going to want to chase the wrong things. There's so many times that you're going to struggle with relationships and other people's expectations. Having good personal discipline in your personal life, with your mental health, with your physical health, with your uh, nutrition. <laughs> um, there's just so many things. I love this book. It's fantastic. It's really easy to read. And guess what? If you're a disciplined person, if you have good habit, and this talks a lot about, you know, being a creative person and, and being an entrepreneur, if you have good habits, then this book will just be a good pat on the back for you. And so there's like 40 or 50 little tips, uh, chapters in here. Great book. Discipline, self-discipline comes in many different forms. If I were to ask you today, are you a disciplined person? You might say, yes, I'm a disciplined person. If I were to ask myself, I would say on the whole, I'm a disciplined person. But this book showed me that there are many, many ways to prove to yourself that you are disciplined. That can be found in micro improvements, trying to get better every single day, the value in moving your own goalposts. It can be found in the power of just showing up when you don't feel like showing up. It can be found in the power of keeping your body healthy and getting good amounts of sleep. How money can be used for us and not to let it be used against us. There are so many ways that discipline can take form in our lives. And that's what this book taught me. Discipline is Destiny. That is on my list this year. Not a music book. Now, what is a music book? I actually don't have a copy of it here because I read a digital copy. So this was probably my favorite book of the year, which is uh, My Life in the Sunshine from Nabil Ayers. This is a music memoir. Now, Nabil has been on the podcast because he is the um, head of Beggars Group. Now, he was the head of 4AD in the US, I believe. And now he's the head of Beggars Group. And we did a Beggars Group episode on Beggars Group is one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic independent record labels in the world. And we had them on the show and we talked to Nabil about his new book. So if you want to hear all about the book, go and check it out. Now, not only is Nabil a label head and working, working with artists like The National, for example, but he has this incredible story about his father, Roy Ayers, who wrote the extremely popular song, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. And he has this really kind of dissonant relationship with his father. And he talks about this in the book and this kind of like this pursuit of a relationship that maybe was never meant to be. I know it's not very musical, but intertwined in this incredible story. And I'm telling you, I read this book in 24 hours. I do need to grab a physical copy because it was my best. It was my favorite um, book of the year. I'm sorry. I should grab a copy. I have a digital copy, um, but I read it in less than 24 hours. I read it in like 16 hours intertwined in this incredible story, other stories about being in a band and going on tour and being signed to a major label, 
and then buying a record store and then running a record store and what that was like in the 90s. There's so many cool music industry stories in here. If you grew up in the 2000s in the music scene, you'll really enjoy this book. This was my favorite book of the year, an incredible music industry book, and then also just a great book about family and relationships. So I love it. I think my biggest takeaway from my life in the sunshine is just about how much I enjoy all of the various aspects of music. I'm nostalgic for how music came into my life as a young child through my family members. I'm nostalgic about how I express music as an artist. I enjoy music through being a music fan and going to record stores on release day. I express my passion for music by signing artists and trying to help artists get their music into the world. I loved seeing Nabil's life over the past several decades and how he was exposed to family members who are musicians and family members that he wasn't in contact with who were musicians and still had an impact. Going to shows, running a record store, being an artist, and then being a label head. That's one of the beauties about running a record label is we get to be a fan. We get to be a music consumer. We get to be a music creator. We get to be a music enabler. That's what I love. Another music industry memoir, and that it was also um, just a real shock, and I actually don't think this book came out this year. I think it maybe came out the previous year. This is called Liberation Through Hearing by Richard Russell. And Richard is the, um, the president. I think he's the owner of XL Recordings, which a lot of people would know XL. Uh, in later days, of course, releasing Radiohead Records but and Adele Records, Prodigy, and The White Stripes, um, Vampire Weekend, a fantastic uh, record label. But this book is, a, you know, it says the rap rave, uh, rap rave and the rise of XL recordings. It's not so much about a specific genre. There was just so many great little anecdotes and stories. I found this book so inspiring. I found this book inspiring. It really inspired me to, to keep making music. And I'll tell you, every time I read a chapter or a couple pages of this book, I would put it down and I'd run up to the studio and I'd get to work. It really inspired me just to be creative and to get to work. Now it's a trade paperback. It's like, looks like it's a heavy read, but I blew through it. You don't have to even be a fan of XL recordings or a fan of their music. Um, This is a phenomenal book for label heads and for creatives and musicians, people in the music industry. I'll tell you what I learned from this book was how powerful music is as a legacy. That the records we make today might just be enjoyed uh, 50 years, 100 years, or 5,000 years from now. We don't really know. It's not up to us. What is up to us is to continue to be prolific and to be creative. Every time I finished a page on this book, I ran to the studio and I started working. Am I doing something that will last forever? Am I doing something that will go viral or sell a million copies? I don't know. And ultimately, I don't really care. I just want to be creating great things. Finally, book number four is uh, not a music book, but a, a book that every record label owner needs to read. And it's called Super Fans. It's by entrepreneur Pat Flynn. Pat has a podcast about running a business. Uh, specifically online businesses. But this is about how to kind of grow and nurture your followers or your subscribers or your customers or for record labels, sometimes it's all of those things. There, It's broken down into like maybe 20 or 30 super um, helpful ideas, um, ways to bless your super fans, ways to identify your super fans, um, how to be more transparent as a business owner. This, uh, for any online business owner, for any creative business owner like you, a record label owner, you need to read this book. Um, It was a fantastic book. Every time, very much like the Richard Russell's book, every time I would read it, I would finish a chapter and then I would go to my desk and implement one of the tips. And that's the sign of a good book, right? You should read through it and go, man, I need to be doing that. And, or, you know, at the very least, pat yourself on the back if you are already doing that. And my takeaway from Pat's book, Superfans, was just how much I realized how important the relationship between you as a human being and your audience is as individual human beings. And oftentimes we think about, will this song get 100,000 plays? Will this video get 10,000 views? How many interactions are my social media posts getting? How many followers do I have? What's my bottom line on my accounting spreadsheet? When we kind of forget to maybe boil the whole industry down to one music fan, you, and another music fan, them, who are buying a record or following your artist. And so this book taught me to really 
narrow my focus instead of looking at the macro audience to actually look at real people and to serve those people and to give them authentic interactions with not just me as a record label owner, but with my artists. I hope you enjoy these books. And, and, and if you're not a reader, I've said this every year, if you're not a reader, then you, you have to change that. I'm telling you, maybe go to audiobooks. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe start with smaller books. Maybe start with books that you'll be that are that are super relevant to your niche uh, and and have a super handsome Canadian on the back. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just suggesting. But I think it's really important. And I kind of shifted from reading sporadically to reading almost a book a week, maybe two or three years ago. And I don't say that to brag. I say that to say it changed my life. And the stuff that I mean, you know, this books have changed people's lives forever. But the stuff I've learned over the over the years have changed how I am as an individual, how I am as a creative, how I am as a business person. I just can't recommend reading enough. And these four books that we talked about today, I think will really help you specifically as a label owner. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash books where you can get all of my book recommendations from this year and the previous years. Thanks for watching.